The Welcome Home Parade, June 5th on the Downtown Parade Route. Now, 11 News at 10. As rockets fly across the skies of Iraq targeting U.S. troops, Air Force One soars through peaceful skies on the other side of the world, touching down at Peterson Air Force Base, where our troops recently reunited with their families. The man behind the war on terrorism, escorted by motorcade to the Air Force Academy to deliver a history lesson to graduates and the world. Like their kind in the past, these murderers have left scars and suffering. And like their kind in the past, they will flame and fail and suffer defeat by free men and women. The president uttered those words to 981 cadets who after four years have earned their wings. His speech teetered between lessons past and present, honoring veterans and those serving now as the 60th anniversary of D-Day approaches. Mindy Stone joins us now with more. So Mindy, how did people react to the president's speech? Melissa, graduates, we talked to you thought President Bush delivered an inspirational message. They say his speech helped them to understand how their military commitment goes well beyond the academy. President Bush speaks to nearly 1,000 graduates at the Air Force Academy. He explains why America has to continue to fight the war and why Americans need to be patient with reconstruction in Iraq. We will not abandon them to the designs of evil men. We will stand with the people of that region as they seek their future in freedom. And to the graduates, President Bush applauds them for their great achievements. He prepares them to serve our country. We will take the fight to the enemy. After his speech, the president shook hands with each and every graduate. I thought it was awesome. I think he's a great president. I'm glad he was able to come here today. We really appreciate his support of the military. It's awesome. Impressive. I, I will, I'm glad he came to speak, and I'm glad for what he said. The ceremony came to a triumphant end. Hats tossed and a flyover by the Air Force Thunderbirds. Members of the 46th graduating class will begin their duty in the military. More than half will go to flight school. Another handful will go to navigator training. All right, Mindy, thank you. And if you'd like to uh, see the president's speech in its entirety, you can just log on to KKTV.com. After the ceremony ended, the president was once again escorted by motorcade to Peterson Air Force Base. Once there, he boarded Air Force One. The president will return to Washington before leaving for Europe later this week to meet with the Pope. He'll also help commemorate the 60th anniversary of the Allies' invasion of Normandy in France. And the president's visit didn't come without rallies. Supporters of the president and protesters of the war gathered at opposite ends of the academy this morning. Between two to three hundred protesters from across the state gathered at the South Gate. Among them, a Bush impersonator outfitted with a nose like Pinocchio's. This group says they support the troops but oppose the war. At the North Gate, Bush supporters waved flags and held up signs. Much to their delight, the president's motorcade whizzed by. They were not expecting to see him. President Bush has had to make many really tough, difficult decisions during his term so far, and I think he needs our support. Hundreds of our most patriotic men and women in this country are being killed every day based on lies, and I just want to make sure that George Bush loses his job over this. Armed deputies patrolled both rallies. There were no problems at either one. And it wasn't just President Bush who captured the attention of crowds today. The Thunderbirds put on quite a show. They also took our own Nora Seibert's breath away. As we've been telling you all week, Nora had the once-in-a-lifetime experience of flying with them yesterday. She joins us now with more on her adventure. Melissa, it was amazing. I had such a great time. We took off just after 11 o'clock yesterday morning. What can pull nine Gs? can cost $6,000 an hour to fly with a sticker price of $23 million. There's 
171,000 horsepower of the Air Force at work. Woohoo! My takeoff, a maximum performance climb. There's four Gs. And now you can see Colorado Springs right there. There's Pike's Peak, upside down. To do acrobatic maneuvers, Captain David Hayworth flies us to an airspace southwest of Pikes Peak. This is just like one of those uh, sort of roller coaster loops. First, one loop. I'm going to roll us to the left. Okay. Very gentle roll. Then a figure eight, since I am flying in Thunderbird number eight. Back over there to your left, you can see uh, two circles. Yeah, I sure can. So it looks like my, uh, my two and a half year old drew it, but it's still <laughs> Each loop takes me to around three Gs. That G stuff, I don't know how you guys do it. The Gs, uh, it takes some getting used to. Next, rolls. Can we do just one roll to start off with? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to show you that big uh, sweeping barrel roll. Boy, I'm not feeling so good to tell you the okay. truth. Okay, that's fine. And, Take uh, a break. A shot of 100% oxygen in the mask and cold air blowing on me fixes the problem. Perfect. Feeling better. Now time to test the speed of the F-16. 500 miles an hour. 500 us miles an hour. 20 seconds. I'm at 598 miles an hour, just about to go over Pike's Peak. Finally, a ride north to my pilot's alma mater, the Air Force Academy. Now, Nord, this is a dream come true right here. <laughs> Flying over the cadet area just like uh, all the people did for me. This is awesome. A daring flight over, but never to be forgotten. Captain Hayworth says it takes years of training to feel really comfortable at some of the higher gravity forces. And that's exactly the next mission for some of today's graduating cadets. Back to you. Well, from one celebration to another, this Saturday marks the welcome home parade for Fort Carson troops. The parade is expected to run from 10 a.m. to noon, but some roads will be closed off starting as early as 9 o'clock. The parade starts at St. Vrain, runs south on Tejon to Vermajo. It will then head west and go back north on Cascade. All roads in between will be closed to traffic. Now over 5,000 troops will march and the parade will feature flyovers, marching bands and floats. Organizers say none of this would be possible without the help of the community. There has just been an outpouring from all over the community for this. And you can catch the parade live right here on 11 News commercial free beginning at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Well, the raid managed to hold off at least for the majority of the graduation ceremony today. Yeah, it looked pretty good. A few of us got some raindrops. There were, though, some severe thunderstorms. So let's go to the radar and see the way things have developed tonight. As we take a look at a statewide view, uh, there are some strong thunderstorms about three hours ago that moved from Elbert County to the eastern border. Just a couple of raindrops left. So all of the big stuff is over for the night. When your day starts tomorrow, it'll be in the 50s, breezy 70s and 80s at 3 p.m. And there is a chance for thunderstorms later in the day tomorrow. It's going to stay pretty close to average tomorrow, but if you like it on a warm, breezy side, Friday is exactly the day you ordered. More about that in the cold front coming in for the weekend when we get back together later. All right, Mike, thanks. Well, a retired Denver police officer is killed in Iraq. Officials say Bruce Tao's convoy was attacked by unknown militants with small firearms. He went overseas in February to train Iraqi civilian police. Tao was a Denver police officer for 29 years. He was a member of Denver's SWAT unit and earned the department's highest award three times. Off duty, he provided security for Denver Broncos owner Pat Bolin. Tao and his wife Terry lost their daughter to leukemia 21 years ago. He died on her birthday. With the first meeting of the new interim government now adjourned, democracy appears to be trying to take root in Iraq. Most Iraqis just hope their new leaders can get violence under control. Two consecutive bombs exploded in a crowded Baghdad neighborhood, killing several people and injuring dozens. At the United Nations, diplomats questioned the U.S. revised resolution for Iraq. Opponents say it still doesn't go far enough in granting the country full sovereignty. But U.S. officials are optimistic they'll strike a compromise. And we expect uh, relatively smooth sailing uh, at the U.N. Security Council deliberations on this uh, resolution. Terrorists continue to have an agenda of their own. They've threatened to kill two hostages if their governments don't condemn the U.S.-led occupation in Iraq. A Grand Junction businessman found guilty of killing his wife is appealing his conviction. Michael Blagg was sentenced to life in prison in April. 
The judge concluded that Blagg shot his wife Jennifer in the head while she slept and then took her body to a dumpster. Blagg's attorney says she'll challenge the sufficiency of the evidence and sentencing. The couple's eight-year-old daughter Abby is also missing and presumed dead. Jurors in the Scott Peterson murder trial heard a kinder description of the man accused of killing his pregnant wife Lacey. Despite conflicting accounts, the defense claims eyewitnesses saw Lacey walking the family dog the day that Peterson went fishing in the San Francisco Bay. That's where Lacey's body turned up in April of 2003. The defense argues that the prosecution has a flimsy case. Peterson's mother agrees. out and hopefully closer to clearing Scott's name and people will then maybe look for the real killers that took Lacey from Scott. The trial could go on for six months. A magazine model who graduated from the University of Northern Colorado is in stable condition after being shot in New York. Authorities say 22-year-old Monica Meadows was shot in the shoulder yesterday as she sat in a subway car. She's recovering at a New York hospital. Meadows moved to the city to pursue an acting career. A former child star of the 1980s television show Family Ties is arrested in Boulder on suspicion of drunken driving. Police say blood tests on Brian Bonsall, now 22 years old, revealed excess alcohol in his system. Police say when they asked him how much he had to drink, he replied, quote, plenty, then failed a roadside sobriety test. Bonsall starred as Andy Keaton on Family Ties. He also appeared in episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. Well, Bank One is offering a $5,000 reward through Crime Stoppers to the tipster whose information leads to the arrest of the trench coat bandit. Police say he's committed a total of 13 bank robberies and he always wears a trench coat. During the last one on April 23rd, he fired several shots at officers before taking them on a high-speed chase. If you recognize the man in the sketch, call Crime Stoppers at 634-STOP in the Springs or 542-STOP in Pueblo. Grounded air tankers could fight Colorado wildfires again this summer if operators can prove they're safe. The Forest Service grounded the 33-plane fleet last month. In 2002, two air tankers crashed, one in California, the other near Estes Park. The private companies that operate the military surplus planes will be asked to supply detailed records of the rest of the plane's flight histories. Once the Forest Service obtains that information, it will work with the FAA and the NTSB to determine if the planes can be returned to service. Well, coming up on 11 News at 10, a wind-whipped wildfire tears through the Florida Everglades. Southern Colorado gets some much-needed moisture. Mike's back with your extended forecast. And do antidepressant medications actually trigger thoughts of suicide? Here are the findings of a new study. You're watching 11 News on KKTV, Southern Colorado's number one news channel. This is 11 News at 10. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a nurse. Of course, I also wanted to be a ballerina and a princess. Some dreams just can't come true. Let Blair help you realize your dreams. Now I work in a doctor's office as a medical assistant. I guess some dreams can come true. Blair College can put you on the fast track to success. For a brochure on career education, call Blair College now at 800-577-7113. That's 800-577-7113. Hi, I'm Lisa. If you're ready to take your future where you want to go, it's time to make the phone call that could change your life. There's a world of opportunity just waiting for you, waiting to offer you a rewarding career. There's a demand for trained professionals, and a trained professional is exactly what you could be with the right education. A personalized, hands-on education can give you the knowledge and confidence to succeed. It's time to put yourself first and call the number on your screen. We're waiting to hear from you. American. Not only do we have Prado's best selection of leather, but at the lowest guaranteed price. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. You know that price on leather just keep falling? I've never seen lower prices of quality name brand sofas and recliners than right now. We're going eight marking down You're furniture prices. Store. Fact is, we make buying furniture easy. American Furniture Warehouse. 
Winds have pushed a 3,000 acre wildfire burning in the Florida Everglades dangerously close to a major highway, forcing it to be shut down. Another 2,600 acre wildfire fueled by the dry conditions is now 75% contained along the Georgia border. Powerful storms knock out power to nearly a half million people in Dallas, Texas. It could be days before it's restored. Officials say the storm packed 80 mile per hour winds, strong enough to flip airplanes and tear off roofs. And rain fell in parts of southern Colorado tonight. Now let's get the forecast. Now, southern Colorado's most accurate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mike Madsen. Gusty winds, showers, thunderstorms, damaging wind and hail were all part of the Colorado weather picture today. Here's a time-lapse view of one of the rounds of showers rolling off the mountains through Colorado Springs, though much of us, uh, most of us didn't see very many raindrops. But it's cool to 58 degrees this hour in the springs. 75, the average high, 46 in the morning. 62% humidity, south winds at 7. 67 degrees in Pueblo. The high was 84 and the low was 47. 55% humidity, east winds at 16, and those easterly winds will tend to thicken the clouds up a little bit. 81 is the average high for Pueblo, 100 is the record that was set two years ago. Spring 75 is the average, and 92 is the record, 2002 the year. Statewide temperatures, 59 in Alamosa and 56 in Aspen, lingering at 76 in Grand Junction. Yeah, 50s and 60s in the eastern portion of the state, with Lyman the cool spot this hour at 52 degrees. Colorado radar shows strong storms earlier, but those echoes are becoming fewer and further between as the night goes on. Remember, though, we have a higher humidity. We have easterly winds, so in some cases, the clouds may thicken up and still give us a raindrop or two tonight. But lightning is far to the northwest, nothing in the eastern portion of the state. A storm target look does show a couple of areas where the rain is more likely to be hitting the ground. Uh, Teller and Fremont counties, extreme southwestern El Paso County, a little bit in Prowers County, and that's it at this point. The general weather picture, a little tail end of a cold front was over the southeastern portion of the state. That helped to be the trigger for the severe storms. But high pressure is beginning to build in, and it means a couple of interesting days for you. Now tonight, a couple of more showers still possible. The overnight low just right for sleeping at 49 in the springs and 50 degrees in Pueblo. Uh, tomorrow, you'll see a mix of clouds and sunshine and a chance for afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms. 78 the high for the springs, 86 degrees for Pueblo. Then, as I told you earlier, if you like it warm and windy, Friday is your day. 85 degrees, only isolated afternoon thunderstorms. But the wind will be increasing because a cold front is going through on Saturday. More wind and the temperature will drop. 79, a chance for thunderstorms Sunday and back to the 80s with a few thunderstorms on Monday. Pueblo will climb from the 80s into the 90s on Thursday and Friday. It'll be windy and cooler. A couple of thunderstorms possible on Saturday. They're more likely on Sunday, possible with about 90 degrees on Monday. Officially, it's still springtime in southern Colorado, but we got a couple of days there that'll feel like summer. Hey, looking forward to it. You're ready for that. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thanks, <right>. Mike. <laughs> well, antidepressants have been at the center of debate over fear the drugs may increase the risk of suicide in adolescents. Hear about the latest findings coming up in Health Watch. First, there was 11 News Storm Team Weather. Now, from KKTV comes 11 News Alert. Easy to read maps and information at your fingertips. Log on today and download this important news and weather tool to your desktop. The 11 News Alert, only from KKTV. Coverage you can count on. Polo Springs Veterinary Hospital offers both evening and emergency care. Our international award-winning facility features state-of-the-art medical technology. We have doctors who've graduated first in their class. Doctors with formal training beyond veterinary school. Knowledge and technology saving lives. Quality evening and emergency care. Polo Springs Veterinary Hospital. Care. Compassion. Commitment. There is no such thing as a perfect science, but orthodontics comes as close to a perfect science as I've ever seen. People have the, the misconception that if they're 30 or 35 or 40 years of age, they're, they're too old to have orthodontic treatment. That is absolutely a misperception. There are very few orthodontic problems that cannot be corrected at any age. In treating patients for 20 years, 7,000 cases, I've seen remarkable results. Call 598-2800 today. 
In May, you learned it's up to you to check that price scanners aren't overcharging you. Plus, our close look at the tort system explained that premiums might be lower, but your car insurance isn't covering everything. Keep watching KKTV 11 News for consumer stories you can count on. study finds Prozac is effective in treating depression in kids. The government-funded study found that 43% of adolescents who received talk therapy alone responded well to the treatment. Those on Prozac alone had a 61% success rate, but kids receiving both the drug and therapy apparently did the best. 71% responded well to the treatment. Earlier this year, the Food and Drug Administration warned that anyone taking antidepressants should be closely observed for warning signs of suicide. Now experts say if there's a connection, it is extremely rare. A new consumer report dispels some myths about prescription drugs and weight gain. Researchers say birth control pills don't actually cause weight gain, but antidepressants do. Everything from Elevil to Remeron could cause you to gain more weight by changing your perception of appetite. Researchers say anti-inflammatory drugs, antihistamines, and anti-convulsant drugs can also cause bloating. The Colorado Rockies go for their first sweep of the season. Next in sports, the Rockies and the Padres go to extra innings. Eric Danner's in for John right after the break. Pick up the cake, talk to the caterer, got stamps, paid utilities, got the kids. Ah, oh, forgot my mammogram. Please, don't ever forget to take care of yourself. Because in the fight against breast cancer, prevention equals peace of mind. Would you like to save money on furniture? Then come to American Furniture Warehouse. Right now at American Furniture Warehouse, you can save on your next home entertainment center. You won't find a better time than right now to come to American Furniture and save during our Super Memorial Day sale. It's all going on right here during Memorial Day at American Furniture Warehouse. Polo Springs Veterinary Hospital offers both evening and emergency care. Our international award-winning facility features state-of-the-art medical technology. We have doctors who've graduated first in their class. Doctors with formal training beyond veterinary school. Knowledge and technology saving lives. Quality evening and emergency care. Polo Springs Veterinary Hospital. Care. Compassion. Commitment. There comes a time in every woman's life when she needs to start taking the appropriate preventative steps to fight breast cancer. If it's time for you to take these steps to another level, call us, even if you have no insurance or don't think you can afford it. Remember, prevention equals peace of mind. Okay, today, former Air Force quarterback Chance Harridge will never forget, but first, the Colorado Rockies going for their first sweep of the season at division leading San Diego. Good defensive battle. Check out the play by Todd Helton. Catches it, steps on the bag. That's three unassisted. Now this video, keep in mind, has kind of the walleye effect. It's from the Jumbotron. Top of the ninth, that's Vinny Castilla striking out. We go to extra innings. Shaq facing former Rocky Jay Payton. Hitting one past Aaron Miles into right field. Sean Burroughs comes home to score. San Diego avoids the sweep. 2-1 the final. The Rockies are off tomorrow, then host the Giants on Friday. The Sky Sox at Memphis with an identical score also in 10 innings. The Sox only getting five hits on the day. Shannon Sharp will be back in Denver tomorrow to talk about his retirement. Sharp will be a broadcaster on the NFL Today, which can be seen here on 11 News during the football season. The career of Broncos linebacker John Mobley could be over. Mobley still hasn't been cleared to play more than seven months after bruising his spine, and the Broncos might need to release Mobley to create more cap money. Ted Sunquist, the Broncos GM, tells the Denver Post that no decision will be made on Mobley's future until their doctors check him out, which could be later this week. Mobley is the only Broncos starter from the defense from their Super Bowl team still playing for the Broncos. Daryl Gardner is finally gone. The Broncos made that official today. Gardner started only one game in Denver, but did get a $5 million signing bonus. Number 99 is expected to sign another big money deal with the Cincinnati Bengals. The Broncos talked with Cordell Stewart a few months ago, but it looks like Stewart will sign a contract with the Baltimore Ravens. 
Stewart played last year for the Chicago Bears. The Ravens want Cordell to back up Kyle Bowler. Stewart, if he signs the deal, it would be for one year. The Air Force football team and quarterback Chance Harridge missed out on the Commander-in-Chief's trophy this year. Navy won the award as the top service academy in football, but as Jesse Kurtz reports, even though Harridge didn't go to the White House, he still got to meet the president. You are dismissed. Graduation day. It's time to celebrate and reflect. For this popular Falcon, it's been a great ride. Joseph Chance Harridge. It's a dream come true when it's all over with. You know, you just look back and think about how lucky, how fortunate you are. Chance Harridge leaves a lasting legacy as a Falcon quarterback. In two seasons, he won 15 games as a starter. He also ranks fourth in career rushing yards at Air Force. Todd Hill just strolled into the end zone. And fifth in career passing touchdowns for option quarterbacks. And I'm just fortunate enough to have been in the position I was in. But in the end, like I said, I'm no different than the guy that just walks by, you know, wearing the same uniform I am today. But today was a bit different for the Falcon signal caller. He received the ultimate congratulations from the commander in chief. Unbelievable. It was very powerful. At the same time, I liked how, you know, he incorporated the fact that we're going to be the people carrying out the mission that he has set forth. But before Harridge carries out his mission in the war on terror, he'll stay on board here at Air Force. I'm going to coach at the prep school next year, try to get some young football guys ready to go, to keep the tradition going on in talking football. Jesse Kurtz, 11 sports. Yeah, the Air Force football team is going to have a new look next year because Chance was the starter of the last two years. They don't know who their oh, starter is yeah. going to be quite yet. Well, I'm sure they'll get it figured out here shortly. Well, we got some time. Yeah, we do. Thanks. All right. Well, coming up on 11 News, the 10, a local spelling champion goes for a second win. Remember when it was easy to meet people? You could strike up a conversation, easily impress someone, or share a ride. But now you're busy at work. There's chores to do and, ooh, those dance lessons. To meet people the old-fashioned way, just call the Colorado Springs People Store. Dial up our free 24-hour automated voice line and listen to single men and women describe themselves. Discover a very private way to meet nice people. The Colorado Springs People Store. It could happen to you, but you've got to call right now. I want people who have any suspicion that they might have any type of orthodontic problem whatsoever to call me. There are many more problems than just crooked teeth. They may have, they may be clicking and popping in the jaw joints. There may be a little bit of dental sensitivity to hot or cold or, or biting pressure. Those are potential bite problems that need to be looked at. There's no obligation for them to come in and sit and, and talk with me for a while and find out. Call 598-2800 today for your free consultation. Polo Springs Veterinary Hospital offers both evening and emergency care. Our international award-winning facility features state-of-the-art medical technology. We have doctors who've graduated first in their class. Doctors with formal training beyond veterinary school. Knowledge and technology saving lives. Quality evening and emergency care. Polo Springs Veterinary Hospital. Care. Compassion. Commitment. The winner of this year's state spelling bee is already advancing in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Akshay Badiga is one of 265 young word masters competing in the event for a grand prize of $17,000 in cash and other prizes. The winner will be determined tomorrow, and I think the uh, spelling bee question should be spell his name. <laughs> it's hard enough to say, much less spell. Well, the Late Show with David Letterman is coming up next. Adam Sandler is going to be a guest, and I guess he's going to sing. Actress, rapper <laughs> Eve is also going to perform. Do you know any of these I, people? I, I know Adam Sandler, but Eve, you know. <laughs> She's popular with the kids. <laughs> there you go, as you'll soon find out. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back here tomorrow.